This is Real Sales Talk. Real sales advice from real sales practitioners. Giving you tips on how to dominate your sales quota are your co host Sean Mitchell and Phil Keen. We don't have a process for referrals at most companies. I go into a company, I say, what's your referral process? They have no, well, what do you mean? I think that, I think that goes back to the premise that why do salespeople suck at prospecting? The number one reason why they suck at prospecting is they don't actually do it. If you are successful and nobody knows, in, 2000, in 2016, 20, 2025, you're not successful. If you ever want to find out what's going on in the company, get in the car and spend a day with the top three salespeople. You'll find out in five minutes. Because you can't be a trusted advisor without two things, trust and advice. I mean, you need both of them. What is going on? We are here with the one and only Morgan J. Ingram uh, for episode five or episode 10 in season five, uh, bringing the, the one and only Morgan J. Ingram to the, to the show, Real Sales Talk. Morgan, what's up? What's up, guys? Super fired up to be on Real Sales Talk. It's always a great time to be here. Um, just lay down some new knowledge for the audience here, so I'm pumped up. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to see. Morgan, we have, we, have, we have a lot. dude. Where, where have you been for the last, like, I don't know, what's, what's new in your life? Let's, let's start there, and then we'll kick into the topic. Wow. So yeah, last time I, it's been a while since I've been on this, um, the real sales talk and a lot has happened. So, you know, when, when I first came on this episode, first came on this podcast, it was, I was like on Chronicle number 11 and now I'm on Chronicle number 54, going to publish 55 this week. So, so much is happening. Craziness is happening. It's, I, you know, it's just insane. And, you know, but since then, you know, been doing speeches, you know, just been elevating the brand, uh, promoted to SDR manager. So, so much has been happening and I've learned so much along the way. Um, I definitely, you know, gained a new perspective on what I'm doing and also just really excited for this year and like what, what's going to go down. Yeah. I, ju I just checked and you were on real sales talk August 21st, 2016. So that's probably been what, nine, nine months or so since you were last on in, in, if you haven't listened to it and you're listening to this, get caught up, hit, hit pause on this recording, go get <laughs> caught up on, let, let me just see here. Um, it was, it was, uh, season two, episode nine. So go, go check that out and, uh, you'll get, you'll be able to get caught up on, on what Morgan's, what Morgan started. And, uh, and then we'll, we'll kind of, this is like part two of, of an interview and, and he's going to update us on exactly what he's been doing uh, the last month or so. Some big things have, have, have come up. So hopefully this is, this is the ongoing story. This is chapter two of many for you, Morgan. Uh, but you got recently got promoted. Uh, and what we want to talk about today is the topic of moving from a peer where you were an SDR peer into now you're managing the SDR team. So talking about that, it's a difficult transition. We actually had Kelly Riggs on. If you guys haven't had a chance to go back to season four, and listen to Kelly Riggs, amazing knowledge was dropped around making that transition. But you're hearing it firsthand from somebody that's going in it real time. And hopefully we continue to give updates as you get further along in your career over the next couple of seasons. Uh, but Morgan, talk about that, that transition from peer to manager. You're only 30, 45 days in, so so it's early on, but let's hear about it. Yeah, so I think the biggest thing is that um, I, I had respect from the get-go, so this transition has not been as difficult as most people would have seen. This actually has been a very seamless process for me uh, because, you know, when it was announced that I was going to be the SDR manager, nobody was – actually, no one was really surprised, and, you know, everyone came up to me and kind of gave me, like – you know, the ovation of just like, you know, this is actually something that makes sense for the business. This makes something makes sense for our team. And I, I see the respect there. So I think the diff only difference now for me is that, you know, I'm a hundred percent coach and guide and, you know, I have different standards. Uh, you know, my boss says, you know, now it's a separation of church and state. You know, I'm not up here. I'm not, I'm not like really your friend. You know, I, I'm not the shoulder to cry on. I'm the person who's trying to elevate you to that next level and to get you to that new position. And so that's the biggest difference for me right now is that, you know, I'm completely fundamentally um, changing the way I'm approaching each one of my reps that, that report to me and also the reps that don't report to me, you know, still giving them that guidance and value. So 
I think the the diff, the switch is now I have to think more of like, you know, I work for every single one of those reps. Um, I have to have a different mentality. You know, I have to always be there for them. You know, an, an individual contributor role, it's like, hey, I do my thing if I'll help when I can help. But like, you know, I'm trying to hit my goals and like stay out of my way. It's more so like, you know, I work for every single person on my team. You know, I give them the value. I'm trying to elevate them. I'm trying to basically get them to the level that, you know, they couldn't get before, you know, I was in that role uh, just with different tactics, tips, tricks that I have. So the transition for me personally has been seamless because they have seen me do the work as an SDR. And so when I tell them, hey, this is something you should do, it's not like, whoa, you know, I haven't seen this before. I don't trust you. It's like, no, we've seen that guy consistently hit his number and go above and beyond in this role. So we have more respect for him to listen. So um, it's definitely just been helpful for me because, you know, I've been able to have that respect from the get go and just continue to build on that respect. Um, just based off of what I know about you, Morgan, um, I think making that transition has probably been uh, pretty easy from moving from from peer to manager. But um, can can you talk about anything that that has caught you by surprise, or or maybe something that you you didn't expect that you encountered once you made that transition? Yeah, definitely. So I, I talked about this um, at the last speech that I did, and there was to be honest, there was nothing that was like well blindsided. But the biggest thing that I saw that I had to do more of, and something that I knew going into this role that it was a little bit of shock was that taking the emotions out of every single decision um, and basically focused on just like the business of what this is, like the optics of it all. So I think a lot of what happens is that, hey, someone's doing bad. They put their emotions into it because they're like, this person's a good person, but like that doesn't matter if they're not doing well. Right. It's not like that. It just, you can't do that. So I think the biggest thing, you know, giving people advice, giving them value has always been, you know, okay, like what's right for the business, like high level, what does this mean? Like, okay, if your numbers aren't good, like we need to improve your performance. It doesn't matter if they're like the greatest person of all time. It doesn't matter if they're like my best friend. It doesn't matter for a buddy, buddy, like that doesn't matter in the, it doesn't matter like where I'm reporting. At. It doesn't matter with what the level of responsibility I now have. It's more focused on like, what can I do to help this person get to the next level, but also taking the emotions out of it. And I think that, you know, a lot of people who go from rep to in that leadership position, they forget to take the emotions out of out of what they're doing. They forget to, you know, completely take that out. Because if you don't take that out, then that's where you ultimately will fail because you will more so have this buddy system or this relationship system that actually hinders people from actually reaching their true greatness. So talk about some of the, the first, all right, you made the transition, you got the title, you obviously take an emotion out. So talk about some of the first just tactics. Let's get deep in it. Like what's the first things you went to do as you became a manager and no longer no longer contributing as, a, as an individual? Yeah, the biggest thing is that I think with anything across the board, you need to show your reps that you're willing to get dirty and in the weeds. So the, the first, I mean, the first month, I was just in the weeds. I was like, hey, look, like, what are you doing, right? Like, what's your process? How are you prospecting? How are you making calls? How are you doing emails? Show me, oh, we have sales off. So how are you doing your cadence? Like, where are you going to actually prospect? Like, what's your schedule actually look like? So, you know, the first month I was always on my feet. I don't think, I mean, they should probably take my desk away because I'm never there. I'm always in the, on the go. I'm always trying to have a conversation with someone. I'm always in the weeds. I sit with, I had sit downs with people for two hours. You know, I would do out, stuff outside of the one-on-one. -on -one. I was asking, um, you know, what, what actually, why are you here at this company? Like, what are you actually trying to accomplish? Why are you actually motivated by this role? You know, what can I do every single day to keep you accountable? You know, there's actually been, you know, certain metrics that I've seen, you know, one person on my team, you know, their mindset, they're like, I need to get my mindset better. I was like, great. I understand all about that. So I send her, I send that person a motivational video every single day. I was like, I'm going to send you one every single day until you tell me to no longer send you anyone. So basically there's a point where you're ready to go, right? Like I don't need any more videos, like I'm straight, right? Um, another rep that I talk to, you know, every single time he has like a, re a response to the email he doesn't like or something that we have to combat with, he's like, all right, let's get in the weeds, let's figure it out, right? So I make him type out the the email, the response, and then I come over on the top and I edit it along the way and like, okay, good, we need to send that out. So basically he's building the skill set, but I'm also coming over on the top to make sure that, you know, that meeting actually does get set with the expertise that I have. So overall, everything that I've said is you have to be in the weeds. I feel like some people think when they get this position, they can just kick their feet up and just like, everyone's just going to do what they need to do. But like, I'm the complete opposite. I'm like in the weeds with them. What are you doing? How can you get better? Are there little things that you're doing in the process that's slowing you down? Because I think that in this SDR role, it's all about speed. And if you're not doing things at a, at a speed pace, 
then you're going to fall behind. You're not going to schedule the demos or get the appointments that you need. When we, we last spoke with you um, in season two, you had walked us through a pretty, a pretty exact and specific schedule. You know, you, you go work out, you come in, you get in at 7 or 7.15, and then you go through your day. You have specific things that you wanted to accomplish throughout that day. Have you, have, have you developed that now as a manager, or are you still in that initial foundation laying phase as, as the SDR manager trying to, as, as you say, get in the weeds? Have you, have you developed a, a, as organized of a schedule as, as what you had when you were an SDR? I have not. It's definitely a, a process right now because, you know, you know how it is. Like you get in leadership and you have all these meetings now. So it's like you never know what your day to day actually looks like. So I've just had a ton of meetings uh, just about, you know, managers on, in other departments, you know, with my boss, with my boss's boss, with like other people, you know, one on one. So it's been a process for me, but I'm starting to actually organize that schedule. I think it'll be around like month three when I finally get it down packed. But, you know, my whole thing is like be proactive as possible to figure out like what's going on with my reps so then I can be, you know, in the weeds for them and help them along the way. It's just been I haven't been able to, to like sit down and get that organized schedule that I would like to just because there is so much stuff going on, uh, and, you know, still within the role that I'm trying to understand. And there's still all these other outside things that I'm dealing with as well, you know, as I'm going into the role and, you know, just like the yes, SR Chronicles, the brain, all these things have just kind of elevated to a level where it's like my schedule definitely has fluctuated in a sense. But, you know, I'm, of course, like I talked about in the last episode, like I'm super focused and on when I get a schedule, like I'm locked in. So that's something that I'm trying to lock back down into just, you know, with the new role, everything's kind of changing and evolving. But yeah, I want to get to a process where like, hey, I sit down with this person for an hour every single day, you know, I'll talk to this person for 30 minutes. Um, that's something that I'm trying to get into to figure out where I'm needed and where like, okay, I need to kind of be hands off here. So you mentioned it a little bit there. You talk about, all right, now I'm going to meetings and my, my day is changing. Talk about managing up now. So as a manager, we, you still have uh, a responsibility to take care of your reps and take care of the people you're managing, but also now you have to start having a conversation at a different level with the managers, the rest of the, the team over there at, at Terminus. So, so talk about that type of relationship. Yeah, and this is really big. A lot of people don't talk about this. So I... I, I've I've been super fortunate enough to read a lot of personal development books um, before I even started at Terminus. So I knew as soon as I started Terminus that I I had to already be managing up regardless whether I, whether what I did or you know it didn't matter, right? So you know when I first got there, I know I was meeting with the CEO as we I was meeting with the CMO, the director of sales, and you know anyone that was kind of either inside my department or outside of my department. I always knew that that was important because like you relationships matter. Like you can't get anywhere without people trusting you and having actually a like with what you're doing and, and the work that you're putting in, you know, anyone can actually do the work, right? But then not a lot of people can be trusted to actually do that work. So that's the biggest thing that I've done um, from the get-go since I started in Terminus. Of course, now, uh, as Phil's mentioning, I'm now in that leadership role. So now it's even more imperative. So, you know, I have weekly meetings with my uh, VP of sales. So, you know, we talk every single week. Uh, I, you know, my dir director of sales development, who I report to, we have a week uh, meeting bi-weekly. And I also meet with the other managers, the, the sales manager, customer success manager, the other SDR manager, um, and then another, we have another customer success manager. So I also meet with them as well. And then also my CMO, I try to meet with him. Uh, his schedule is hectic now, but I try to meet with him every single month if I can squeeze it in, phone call or, or face to face. So, you know, my whole thing is that like, there's so much going on, but you can never forget that you have to be talking to people across the organization because there could be a problem that they have that you can actually solve. So there have been multiple cases where they're like, hey, there's a problem here. And I'm like, actually, know the solution to that. You give them that nugget and they'll always remember that nugget. So that's why it's important to always be managing up and talking to those people. Like, yes, you have to like make sure that your team's performing on that level, but you also have to make sure that you're 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 hitting goals um managing up that like people would be like there's no, I didn't know you actually knew how to solve the solution you got to show up there cuz that's how you're going to get to that next level what do you think so looking forward i would imagine you are going to start building a team of sdrs how are you going to start coaching people to take take your place as a as a sdr manager or Developing it, developing them into a leader. Let's say you identify one person, or you know, you have someone who approaches you and says, "Hey, I'm really interested in getting into leadership. 
and becoming an SDR manager or whatever, wherever. How, how, how will you approach that? Do you have some thoughts on how you will now start to kind of pass along what you did to get into your role now? Yeah, I do. I do. So um, there have been people who, you know, have already s- seek that interest, right? They're like, I want to be in leadership. Great. Awesome. So I asked them, like, why do you want to be in leadership? And a lot of people want to be in leadership for sometimes the wrong reasons. They're like, yeah, I just want this title so I can be cool now. Like, great. Well, you're going to not, you're not going to go very far if that's the reason that you want to be in it. Right. Or they're just like, Hey, I just, you know, I want this power because like I've never had it before. Like that you're not, again, you're not going to go as far as you need to. So, you know, if someone comes to me with that, I first figured out like, why do you want leader? Like, why do you want to be in leadership? Like, what is the thing that's driving you? Right. So if someone answers like, yeah, you know, I actually want to build people up. It's something that I've loved my entire life. Great. You know, next step for me is that I have tons and tons of leadership books that I've read to get me prepared for this point. So I've been primed for this, like, you know, for a while now, you know, I've been reading personal development for six, seven years. So I've been reading this ready for this moment. So the biggest thing is that I can always pass down a book. So I'm like, Hey, you know, John C. Maxwell is a perfect example. Like, Hey, I got a John C. Maxwell book. Here you go. Read this. Let me know what you think. And if they, they, the thing is like, it's a test, right? I hope always, always have to test people to see how much do they actually really want this. So when I give them that book, and then they read it and they're like, I want another book, then I know they're serious, right? So now I can be like, okay, like these are the things that you need to do to get ready for leadership. You need to talk to these people in the organization. You know, I give you kind of value tips like, hey, look, watch what I do, right? Don't don't listen to what I say, right? Always watch what I do. That's the biggest thing, right? Like what are my actions when I'm actually in this leadership role? Like what am I doing that's impressing you, right? So I always tell those people that are, you know, in ASCR shoot right now that are like, hey, I want your position. Great, awesome. I want you to be better than me. That's awesome. Like what? Okay, so like, what can I give you, right? So that's the books. That's the first thing. That's a test to figure like, are you serious about this? Are you going to read this? Because if you don't read it, then you're not serious. That I can figure that out because then I'm not going to give you any value if you can't do that first. Then second, I'm going to give you the value and say, hey, here are things that I'm doing on a daily basis. This is how I got here. I'm going to tell you exactly what I did. And then three is like, okay, actually, sh- like watch what I'm actually doing, right, on a daily basis. Because like, obviously, you want my position. So actually watch what I'm doing. And then let's actually have a sit down conversation about that. So that's, those are like the three, those are like the three high level priority things. Like, um, there are more granular things, but those are like, that's, that's how I know, like, if someone's like really serious about it. And like, that's how I'm building it. Yeah. What, talk about what? some of your goals for SDR manager, let's say six to 12 months. Where would you like to see yourself or what would you like to accomplish? Yeah, great question. So, you know, I want to be the best, you know, person in SDR leadership by far. Like, I just want to be the best. So um, for me, that's basically, you know, the people that are on my team now. um, If I think about it, yeah, I want the the half of the team uh, by this year, by the 2017, like half of them should be AEs. That's my goal. Um, I want the team to be 150%. Uh, that's my goal as well. And then, you know, I want every single person, um, you know, when they come out of the SDR program, they were better for it. So um, that means that I want at least one person to come into leadership, probably someone actually take what I'm doing at, at some point. And I want the half, the other half of the team to become AEs. And when they become an AE, like they're primed and they're ready to go to where like all they have to do is understand the information and they're off to the races. There's no slack. They still remember about prospecting. They still remember the grind. They still remember who they are. And my whole thing is that like the people that I'm currently on the team now that I'm actually coaching, that they never forget what they learn as an SDR and they don't like start drinking the Kool-Aid of being an AE and just chilling. Like that's one thing that like I'm going to stop like that. That just makes me angry. Like people who just like they get in a position and then they forget where they came from and then they complain like that makes no sense. So that's one thing I want to do is like instill that inner drive. Um, that inner focus and also like, don't forget where you came from. Like that's the biggest thing for me. So, you know, being the best leadership in the position by far, continue to provide um, leadership on that end, Um, helping people get to the AEs, half the team. That's what I want to do. 150%. And then one person, um, I feel like one or two, I feel people will actually gravitate towards leadership and go in that SDR leadership role. So we had this conversation a little bit and then we were, were (laughs) yes. Uh, So Morgan, we, we had a conversation really early on. It's one thing I respect about you is you'll ask questions of, hey, what should I expect? What's going to happen? This kind of things. And, and I've been in a similar path that you have. So it was, it was that conversation. I told you it's exactly what you're saying right now. It's, I'm an SDR and I got promoted and you used to manage me. But Morgan, I'm going to forget all about everything. Like I'm going to, ha- it's going to happen, right? So how do you anticipate what that looks like? 
when it happens, because it's going to happen when, when an SDR gets promoted to an AE and they forget that, hey, you know what? Sometimes there was a grind that went into what I got to give you as, as an AE and you're not grateful for it. Or um, let's get real, I mean, real in the sense where an AE starts to complain about the, the quality of leads, the type of leads, what happens, how, how, what's being passed to them. How do you have that conversation from somebody that was a, someone you managed or even a peer of yours at one time to now you're, you're kind of managing up, but you're not because you're a manager, but they're an AE and they're kind of on your level. So explain that dynamic because it's a weird dynamic. Yeah, it is a weird dynamic. And of course, I haven't had anyone go to SDR to AE yet. So I've had to deal with that. But I would I just it's more so just like, hey, look, 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 what like put it in perspective. That's what I was like doing, putting things in very simple terms. Like when someone's like, hey, I don't want to prospect anymore. I'm like, OK, great. So basically you're telling me like, let's say you're on the basketball court, right? And you're like, you know what? I don't want to dribble anymore. Forget it. I'm not going to dribble anymore. I'm just going to travel and I'm just going to go up to the, I'm going to go up to the lane. Nobody touch me. And I'm going to do layups. That's basically what you're telling me. So I'm like, is that what you want to be? You just want to be a person who like just doesn't want to abide by the fundamentals of actual sales. Like, do you actually want to be the best sales professional? Like to me, it's not more so like, driving value or driving a point down someone's throat it's more so asking them a question that makes them think and realize what they're doing doesn't make sense right so it's like do you actually want to be the best sales professional in this company or like do you just want to coast like what what are you what are you really here trying to do right so like my whole thing is like if that happens to someone i will challenge them i'll be like hey look like this is what you did in this role and this is how you saw success like if you want to see more success you're gonna have to prospect if you complain like then you're, you're basically complaining about factors that like are irrelevant. You can always control your pipeline. You can always control how much you can sell to because you can always control your prospecting. Like, and then it's up to you whether or not you actually want to abide by that. And you know what? Like at the end of the day, like the hustle will out hustle the hustle, right? So like at some point, like because you didn't prospect, like you will end up probably not hitting quota one time and then you're on plan and then you're almost out the door. So it's like putting things in perspective of like, hey, look, there are going to be people I'm going to tell who are like, you need a prospect when you get in this role and they're going to outperform you. And then you're going to be like, what happened? It's like, I think it's more so challenging them with the question of like, hey, look, like, do you actually want to be the best here? Like, you know, do you actually want to perform on the level that you know you can? And then also saying like, hey, look, because you don't want to do these things, like this will happen because there will be people who actually want to prospect and they're going to outperform you. And then that will most likely be on you. And I say I'm saying different things because. I'm going to break this down even more is because it, de it depends on the person, right? So like, if I know I can be really direct with someone and be like, look, like you need to get this together. Like that's just completely false. And this is like ridiculous that you're even saying these things like that. Or if they're a different type of person, I'm going to challenge them with questions and make them think about it. So I think it's like those things that I've, that I've outlined right there for you, but also it's personalities. Like, but either way, I'm going to challenge that person to think about like why they think that prospecting has become above them. So um, S SDR Chronicles. So you've you've kind of shared your journey from beginning as an SDR to to now. Where will that go? What does that look like now that you're an SDR manager? Um, similar topics, just different perspective. Have you thought about this? Yep, we're going. I'm going still. Um, I'm going hard for a hundred. Barcy said I got to get to a hundred, so I'm going hard like until I get there. You know what's next after that? I don't know, but I'm going to 100. Uh, the topics will change. Um, I'm going to talk more about um, video will come out soon. Like what I've learned in the past 30 days as an SDR manager, uh, leadership tactics that you know that have been working for me. You know, in this I guess 30 to 45 days I've been in the role. I'm going to talk about you know things that you should look out for your reps um, when we get into the. We're doing some you know getting into hiring now, so I'll talk about like you know <laughs> hiring my first person, like what that looks like, you know. Um, being, uh, I guess, younger and probably the, all the people I'm going to interview are going to be older than me. Like talk about that perspective for people who are younger managers. So it's going to be a lot of, yeah, leadership tactics and a lot of management tactics and optics. So it's going to be a little bit different. I'm still going to talk about stuff in the SDR role that are like, hey, here's some nuggets that I have that were successful for me. But I'm definitely shifting it towards a leadership focus. Um, I'm actually probably going to do more stuff on um, marketing as well, actually. I'm going to talk about a lot about marketing sales alignment. So I'm going to have probably a little bit more marketers on the SDR Chronicles soon. So it's definitely going to change, um, but I'm excited. Uh, you know, it's people were just like, hey, like, is this going anywhere? And I was like, no, it's not. It's not going anywhere. Um, so it's, I'm still keeping it going. Um, it's been 
something that's been, uh, you know, more impactful than I thought it would be, um, especially after being at Rainmaker. I realized how impactful it was for a lot of people. So, you know, it's like one of those things that I just got to keep going. Yeah, I think it's fun that, you, that you're documenting the journey, and, and it's it's been great to see where you were as an SDR and, and over the last year how much you've grown and now how active you've been to where now you're getting promoted and it's it's the things you're talking about. You're in real time having the conversation about like right now you're 35, 40 days in and you're having the conversation about things that you're having issues with, things that you're walking through, things that you're anticipating. And it, it'll be interesting to see six months from now. All right, looking back retroactively, what did I know? What wish I knew? What I, I wish I would have done this differently. Um, so it's really fun that you're documenting the entire journey and, 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 uh, I'm, I'm a huge Morgan J. Ingram fan. I think we all know that. Um, so uh, I, I, congrats is, is one of those things uh, that I want to make sure we, that I slow down to say for you. But um, what what do you see the next six months looking like for you as after you get the STR Chronicles going? What what's the six next six months look like? That's a that's a great question, Phil. And you know, first off, just thank you for always the support. And you know, as always, like it's much appreciative. Like. Just to even dive deeper, like, you know, when I was at Rainmaker and I was at these events and I've been like, you know, kind of entering 2017, never would have thought like it would have taken this level that it's at or have gotten the much respect just for like making a video that, you know, is off my MacBook and saying, hey, guys, it's Morgan J. Ingram. Like, hey, what's going on here? You know, it's like it's crazy to me how far that actually goes. And like, you don't know who's watching and like how much people actually support that. So, you know, thanks for all that. Um, I guess to the next six months. For me, um, you know, you guys know this, like, I don't really care about um, titles. I don't care about all that stuff. It doesn't really matter to me. The biggest thing that matters to me is how much value I'm putting out and how valuable I am to the marketplace. Um, the next six months for me, I feel like are going to be crazy because um, the SCR Chronicles have picked up this uh, momentum that I, th I didn't think that I would. You know, a lot of people that, you know, I have tons of conversations now about a tons of a tons of different things. So you know, a lot of things are happening, uh, you know, lunch and learns are happening, you know, um, talking to other managers and giving them strategies and just talking and all these things. So I think the next six months will be a, a crazy ride. You know, I feel momentum. I feel really fired up about everything that's going on. And, you know, I feel in six months, like, you know, in, in the sales development terms, like I'll probably, you know, be the person in thought leadership. Like that's, that's honestly how I feel right now. It's just like the content that I'm putting out. Like, I just don't see anyone else kind of coming I don't see anyone's coming. So like, to be honest, like, this is where I'm at. Like I'm just riding this, I'm just riding the wave right now and I have a lot of momentum. So I'm not looking to stop. I'm looking to keep going full throttle um, and to continue to provide leadership. Um, one of the biggest things for me right now is to just be honest with you guys is to bring more diversity to tech. Like that's one of my actually big initiatives right now. It's like my, it's my vocal point. Like, you know, I've made it to a leadership position you know, as a minority. And like one of my things right now is like to continue to push that agenda because there, there isn't a lot. So now, you know, one of my things right now is um, in the hiring process to elevate that and accelerate that even more. So um, in the next six months, yeah, I'm looking to bring people in to have the same drive as me and make them better than me. I want, I want people who are better than me. So that's one of the things. And if I continue to provide that value and that thought leadership for the next six months, I know I can find people like that who are motivated and you know, find, I don't know, the more, next Morgan J. I don't know, but who knows? But to find someone who has that drive to get out there and then continue to, to have that leadership, and that's that's really where I'm at right now. That's fantastic. We've really enjoyed catching up, and um, it's always great to hear um, some, of the, some of the knowledge that you drop around what you're doing, around SDRs, and, and I, 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 I think that you've always been as, as long as I have been following you, someone who's a big fan of leadership and leadership development. So um, I, I, I think that the SDR Chronicles and in your role as an SDR manager, that's going to really flourish a lot. So excited to um, get another snapshot in six to nine months, have you back on and hear some of the perspectives that, that you've gained from, from just time in the seat. So, we're about to go into a, a rapid fire. This is something new that we've introduced in the last two, three weeks. Cool. But before we do that, um, where can people connect with you if they want to follow what you're doing with the SDR Chronicles, as well as maybe maybe there's an SDR listening to this episode who's got some questions for you? How can they connect? Yeah, not hard to find me, guys. Uh, at Morgan J. Ingram. Morgan J. Ingram on LinkedIn. 
and then YouTube uh, and SoundCloud, trying to build that out right now, uh, the SDR Chronicles. Awesome, cool. All right, so like I mentioned, we, we've been doing this new rapid fire. We're making it exclusive content for YouTube to try and build up our, our YouTube subscribers, which by the way, we just crossed over 200 subscribers. So um, we're, we're, we're moving along there, but um, this rapid fire is just, just meant to give other people listening to this a little bit of insight into the Morgan J. Ingram world. So um, all, all relevant stuff and stuff you, you will easily be able to, to answer. So I know, Morgan, that you're a big basketball fan. So um, I'm curious to know who your, who, who's your basketball hero and what are some, some qualities or things that you have gleaned from that person and implemented into your career? I love this question. Uh, Kobe Bryant. I mean, Kobe's, uh, Kobe's the best. I, I don't care what anyone says. I don't care if anyone's like LeBron. No, forget it. Kobe Bryant, like he's the best. And the reason that I like Kobe so much is because he has a mentality of like, I don't care who you are, what you're doing. When, it, when I come on the court, I'm annihilating you and I'm just, I'm, I'm here to destroy everybody. Like, and I love that mentality because I feel like a lot of people in sports now are really soft and you know i just i have no time for softness and he's just hardcore i'm in the game get out of my way so i love that and i try to implement that in like my uh my approach i guess my brand like who i am i'm just like hey look i'm gonna do me get out the way i'm gonna make it happen um in a very humble way as well not like you know okay look look at me but and that's why i really like kobe also like his mentality of like how he has he has a schedule you know just like how i like to have one so he would always wake up at I think 4.30, you'd always get there earlier than everyone else, no matter what, even if you, like, even when he was, like, the all-star of all-stars, he was still earlier than everybody, and he stayed later than everyone. Like, even when he made mistakes, he was like, yo, we need to go two times harder the next day. Like, that mentality I try to have is just, like, you know, not always improving every single day, not just because, like, oh, great, like, I hit 300 subscribers, I can chill now. It's more so, like, great, like, how can we hit 1,000? Great, how can we hit 10,000? Like, Oh wait, we messed up on that call. Like, how can we get better? Or like, I didn't talk to the rep that I needed the way I needed to. Great. How can I like make a better conversation the next time? Like, that's the mentality I have, um, you know, for my life. And you know, Kobe Bryant was kind of the person that you know I always admired, you know, on and off the court. So that's kind of where I'm at on that. Agree. Yeah, he's he's my favorite basketball player as well, even more than that's Jordan. Awesome. Even though I have a lot of respect for Jordan, uh, Kobe just. Uh, there's something about him that I always was was amazed and and uh, may, maybe it's because you know you you we, we all kind of saw him grow up from yeah. you know kid out of high school to right into NBA and then to when he retired so we yeah kinda, he's a killer he's a killer like he's gonna he's like look I'm gonna win the championship get out of my way you know it's not like he's like I'm gonna make this happen so you know he has that killer instinct that a lot of people sometimes just don't have yeah. Okay. So the next question is centered around failure. Um, as an SDR, you're getting a lot of no's. You're you're getting a lot of rejection. How how do you how do you respond to failure? Th this could be in 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 the SDR role, or this could just be in life in general. Do you have some some tactics or hacks that you have kind of learned over time to help you get better at getting through and over fear of failure? Yeah. So when it comes to failure. I think the overarching theme is there's two things that happen when you, you fail, right? So you either get demotivated or you get fired up and you get motivated. Those are the only two things that can really happen when you get rejection. So, you know, I think the, the one of the biggest rejections that happened in my life uh, is it comes, it actually relates back to basketball. Like sophomore year, um, I got cut from varsity. So I was the only person like out of the core five that we all grew up together, all play basketball starting five. I was the only person that got cut. So all the all other four that were starters, they all made varsity. And I was like, what the heck? So like I was pissed off like the entire year. Like I played JV so angry. Like I just was like, I just was not playing how I needed to play. So the biggest thing I learned from that is, you know, I, it demotivated me. It was made me angry. But and then I like reflected, put it in perspective. It was like, OK, I failed here. Like I didn't make it. So like, what do I need to do? So like that next summer, I got in the gym and just like went hard. And then I made the team six man, all that stuff, you know, senior year, I started, we won the championship, right? So it's like failure to me has now been my ultimate motivation. So even, even kind of like no one knows a lot about this, but like I interviewed with like 10 to 15 tech companies before I got to Terminus. Like I got rejected by every single one of them. Like 
they were like, no, like you don't have experience. We don't know who you are. Terminus took a chance. And like, now they're probably like what we messed up. Right. So it's like, but the thing is like with failure, you have to grow. So, you know, every single interview, I learned something new. I always got feedback. And, you know, when I got to Terminus, I was prepared, but I was, ex I'm excited that I failed because like, if I wasn't prepared for Terminus, I wouldn't be on this podcast. Like I wouldn't be answering this question. Right. So it's like, I'm always grateful that I have failures because it makes me learn. But a lot of things, a lot of the problem with most people is that they fail and then they complain and they moan and they don't actually reflect on the learning lessons behind that. So I now get motivated by my failures because I know I can always learn and I'm always going to get better. So failure succeed, I'm going to learn, I'm going to get better. So I guess that's why I'm always really fired up because it doesn't really matter. I'm always going to be motivated. I'm always going to learn. That's great. Last question. What book would you say has had the biggest impact on your career? It could be, could be fiction or nonfiction. What book first comes to your mind when you think of that book that has influenced you the greatest? I, I'm going to have to just bring it back to the first book. Um, I always answer the law of success, but that's my favorite book of all time. It, it fundamentally has changed my life, but I'm going to say the book that actually really changed my life was the, um, you know, how to get your dream job by Pete Leibman. This book has no one ever has really heard of this book. My mom found it in a library and she gave it to me and she was like, read it. And it was my freshman year in college. So I read it and I used those tactics to network with like, you know, people that I never thought I would be able to. I actually learned how to use LinkedIn based off of that book. So, you know, I, like my freshman year, I had like 700 LinkedIn connections and nobody even knew what LinkedIn was. And everyone was like, how are you, like, what are you doing? Right. I was like, it was, it was ridiculous because no one knew what I was doing, but I learned so much about per, the professional world. And I was having very high level professional conversations with directors and VPs as a freshman in college. So that fundamentally actually changed my process or changed how I talk to individuals now, like in, in the SaaS world and tech and like B2B. I can have conversations with high level people because I've, I've been doing it for five, six years. Like, but nobody knows that because nobody, I, I don't really talk about that that much, but like the reason I'm able to talk to people that are high level without any hesitation and without being like scared is because I've been doing it for five, six years. I've been asking for inter informational interviews for 15, 20 minutes for the past five, six years. And I've, you know, I've just built that skill set of talking to those people. So I would say, yeah, that book actually really changed my life because after I read that book, at the back of the book, it had like 200 of the books I needed to read. And that's when I became like, you know, addicted to reading. So that's real. That's the book that actually really changed me because like I learned so much on a practical level and I also got new books to read that actually changed my life even more. Amazing. We'll definitely link that up. Do you know if that's available on Amazon or some modern, yeah. modern... It should be. It should be. I can. I can. I can find it. I'm pretty sure it's available on Amazon. Um, my mom just got it for me in the library, so nice. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's probably available on Amazon. I'm pretty sure. Well, hopefully, it's still in print. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm sure a lot of our listeners would love to get their hands on that. Well, Morgan, it's been an uh, an honor and a pleasure to catch up with you again, and um, we wish you just phenomenal success as an SDR manager and phenomenal success with the SDR Chronicles as, as it kind of takes a, a different angle um, as far as topics go. And um, uh, thank you. So uh, Phil, do you, do you have anything you want to close with? Go listen to SDR Chronicles and listen to the last uh, nine to 12 months of Morgan's life. Uh, and Morgan, thanks for being a guest. No, it's, it's always awesome to come on Real Sales Talk and drop some knowledge and uh, the journey has been fun. So it's, it's interesting to see the perspectives of like the last episode. And now like, you know, there's just so much knowledge in the journey. So and it's been fun and I always appreciate coming on here. All right. Well, thanks again and um, go get them. Always. See ya.